Good afternoon and welcome to the spring 2021 installment of the UCR School of Public Policy Student Spotlight Series. My name is Kevin Karami and I'm a Dean's Public Student, Public Policy Student Ambassador. It's a delight for me to serve as your host today. Our Student Spotlight Series is aimed at showcasing to the larger external communities the talents, research, community involvement, advocacy, and other notable work by our very own public policy students here at UC Riverside. But before I introduce our first speaker, let me first go over the format for today's webinar. Our student speaker will give a presentation for the first portion of the event. Afterwards, I will bring up a panel of fellow public policy students to serve in a round table with our At that time, I will also be fielding questions from the audience. Audience members, please note that you can submit your questions for Sana anytime throughout the webinar via the Q&A feature you will find at the bottom of your screen. Please do not send your questions via chat. Instead, please use the Q&A box. Now I'd like to introduce our speaker. We are delighted to have public policy student Sana Joffrey join us today. Sana Joffrey is the founding editor-in-chief for the School of Public Policy's new undergraduate journal, Concilium. Over the past few months, Sana has worked with the Roosevelt Network at UCR to create more research and publication opportunities for undergraduate students. As editor-in-chief, her goal is to provide a space for UCR students to develop and present policy ideas from unique perspectives. Thank you for joining us, Sana. I'll go ahead and hand it over to you now. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to speak to you all today. I'm going to go ahead and just share my screen. Alrighty. So I am here today to talk to you all a little bit about research and publication at the undergraduate level and how this comes to play with our brand new journal, Concilium. So jumping straight into it, um, you know, talking about research, there is a really broad definition where you're talking about just investigation or experimentation aimed at the discovery or interpretation of facts, revision of accepted theories or laws in the light of new facts or practical application of such new or revised theories or laws. And you're thinking, okay, we know this, now what? Um, it's the exact same thing within the context of public policy. And that's because we need information and data to drive our policy choices. So, you know, policymakers make decisions based on available information at almost every step of the policy process. Um, so using Charles Whelan's policy process, the one that's taught at almost every intro to public policy class, uh, we can take a look at healthcare as an example. The very first step in any sort of policy process comes down to identifying a social goal, right? Maybe for healthcare, that is making sure people have access to affordable healthcare, right? We want that as our goal, right? And maybe we came down to that goal by putting out a survey, right? When it comes down to healthcare, what do you wanna see, right? And we find that people maybe want affordable healthcare. The second step comes down to diagnosing that problem, right? We have our goal, what is standing in the way, right? Is it any one thing on its own? Is it a couple of different things uh, altogether? What is it, right? Because in order to actually get to our goal, we need to figure out what's stopping us and how we evaluate that problem. Looking at identifying the appropriate institution for action, again, right? Research will be able to tell us whether or not Hmm, maybe private insurance companies will be able to take this on, or maybe it comes down to government or a nonprofit, figuring out who comes up with the best solution that works for people, right? Because not everyone is going to be best suited for any one task. So we have to make sure we are actually moving forward with research, figuring out what it is that will do the best job. That brings us to the fourth step, which is just evaluating the substance and politics of competing policy options, right? We know that policy X might be really effective, um, but there's another policy that people want more, right? We see a lot of public debate about healthcare and just Medicare for all, things like that, making sure we are bringing affordability and accessibility to healthcare. Um, there's a lot of public debate, right? How do we pay for this? Um, do politicians actually wanna pass this? What are the mechanics of the situation? We need to be able to identify um, all of the different actors, all of the substance in order to actually determine you know, what will work. 
Um, and lastly, implementing, enforcing, and monitoring that policy change. We need to know if the policy is going to work because we can say, yes, let's do it. We've got this policy down. Um, our legislators voted on it. It's done. We can't leave it at that because we need to be able to see whether or not this policy is working and whether or not we need to reevaluate. Right, life happens, circumstance change, uh, circumstances change. So we need to be able to monitor this policy change in order to move forward and make sure that we are doing what's best. So um, that brings us to playing the information game, right? If we want policy to be representative, the data that drives policy must also be representative. If we have incomplete or unrepresentative research, that means your policy is not going to be representative of any one given problem, the population's impacted, or how that solution might be impacting any one community, right? We see a lot of inequities um, because we go in, we say, okay, cool. We have this policy that will target this community and this community. Turns out it's not doing any of that because we undercounted this population or we completely just were way off base in our initial evaluation. So that brings me to a case study. So California spent almost $200 million on the 2020 census in order to get representative data. Uh, on the right, you'll be able to see a map um, and it's kind of like a heat map. The darker areas are going to be what we call harder to reach communities. Um, that includes a lot of different um, groups. So that means homeless people, undocumented, um, people who have low access to internet, people who have lower uh, high school graduation rates, younger children, right? Some counties have uh, larger populations of children under five, that's a lot harder to count. Um, maybe, you know, this community doesn't have a lot of people who are comfortable speaking English. Right, how do we get the census out to them? How do we make them feel comfortable answering census questions? Um, and then also things like employment, right? We can collect a lot of information from employment data, but maybe people aren't working, right? And 2020 was an especially difficult year uh, when we were looking at counting people. So the California Census Office did put out a little statement, right? The successful efforts of outreach and communications um, that's going to help inform equitable and inclusive resource allocations for the next 10 years. So looking at how we are splitting up resources throughout the, uh, throughout the state, that's going to be really important, especially given um, this recent surplus, we're looking at just investing more in our communities. So we wanna make sure that is actually happening in an equitable and representative manner. Which brings me to how can students engage research, right? I say research drives policy, you wanna drive policy, you have to drive research. So how do you get involved? There are so, so many opportunities at UCR, right? You can get together with some faculty. We are so lucky at UCR to have so uh, such an open <laughs> faculty, people who are really willing to work with students, show them what needs to be done, engage them and so on. We also have several centers run through um, the School of Public Policy. We also have our undergraduate research journal, but I'm here to talk about a newer opportunity, uh, Concilium. So back in October, um, we heard from the Roosevelt Network and decided this was something we wanted to bring to campus because it was a good opportunity for UCR students, right? It really fits in with our culture. Our students tend to be pretty involved in things like this. So we thought this would be a great thing to do. From the Roosevelt Network, we decided, okay, we have this advocacy part down. We have a space for students to think about things. What about a place for them to translate those thoughts, those policy ideas into something real, right? An actual um, paper, something that is well articulated, comprehensive, and really gives you an idea of what sort of policies we're looking at. Um, so uh, just a little bit more background, concilium roughly translates to policy, debate, and discussion. And that's sort of what we see is as an ideal for our journal, just because we do need to have comprehensive discussions about policy, right? If it's undebated, maybe we're not getting into specific nuances. Maybe we're not talking about 
um, issues that are hidden. So we really wanna encourage students to take a look at policies from a wide variety of perspectives and really just get into it. And uh, of course, we wanna follow the mission of the School of Public Policy and provide students with this opportunity to present bold new solutions uh, for the region and beyond. So um, talking a little bit about program features, I know research is really intimidating. It's so, so intimidating to go up to a professor and say, hey, can I, or are you working on any research? Can I help out in any way? It's a really tough thing to do, especially if maybe there are some roadblocks in front of you, right? Like maybe I don't know how to do this. Our goal with Concilium is to provide a space uh, for students who are just getting into it, right? You can come in knowing nothing and you can still publish a piece at the end, right? Our goal is to increase accessibility um, for a program like this. Writing is hard, research is really hard. Um, so this is going to be just a really good space for students to explore what we're looking at with policy research. In the fall, we will start off with some info sessions, we'll start workshopping, and we'll also begin opening up submission opportunities. We also just finished staffing our editorial board, so you're going to have just tons of access to peer review, not only through your peers in the Roosevelt Network, but also through our editorial board. And you'll also be working, like I said, within the Roosevelt Network. And this is just a good opportunity for you to overall build writing and research skills, as well as engaging in networking and professional development. I feel like, especially after the past year, a lot of us are eager to get back into it um, and you know, work with our peers. And it's also an opportunity for you to get published not only at the local level, but at the national level, right? Our journal is UCR wide, but because we are also working with the Roosevelt Network, this is an opportunity for you to polish your piece through our local uh, journal and then submit that to the national journal, the 10 ideas journal that is run through Roosevelt. Um, so it's overall just a ton of opportunities for you all here. And we're sort of coming to a close about just getting involved. Here's what we're looking at. Um, if you wanna start off just by getting involved with the Roosevelt Network, we're actually starting to um, open up our pods. So looking at specific policy areas for students to work with each other. Um, that's starting in the next few weeks. So it's really exciting. And a lot of our events will actually be run through the Roosevelt Network. So info sessions, as well as our workshops. We can get plenty of help from the Roosevelt Network. Um, and that brings us to fall, right? Most of our events will start late summer, early fall. Um, so you guys can just keep an eye out for that. And we'll be sending out uh, all kinds of stuff through social media. You can also start attending workshops, start researching and begin writing. Like I said, it's pretty intimidating just to start, especially when you think, okay, I have this deadline. I have to finish all of this by then. Um, how am I supposed to do this, right? Like I've never done anything like it. We are here to guide you through every step of the process. We're gonna be hosting tons of workshops. We're going to be really involved with the writing process. Um, as much or as little help as you want, you'll get it. Which brings us to step number four, right? Just going through that editing process with our board, right? You're gonna have the entire fall, some of winter to begin writing your pieces after these workshops. Um, and you'll go through multiple rounds of editing with our board. So you're gonna have plenty of opportunity to just fine tune all of that stuff, actually figure out what it is you're articulating, how to say it and representing what it is you wanna be able to say here. The next step would be submitting your policy idea for publication through Concilium. So we're gonna be opening up submissions um, and that'll happen right after the editing process goes through. And, you know, you'll be published at our level. And then, you know, maybe you say, okay, I wanna take this further. Let me publish this at the national level. So you'll have an opportunity to submit that um, and potentially be published at the national level. So 
Uh, that is actually it. It was a super short presentation because I do want to keep time for you all to ask questions. This is a new opportunity. We're still working through a lot of stuff. Um, and I'm just excited to speak to you all um, and seeing you all join Roosevelt and Concilium. So here are the socials. Like I said, we're mostly run through Roosevelt. Um, the Concilium website is currently under construction, but you can find plenty of information on the Roosevelt site. And you have access to um, our email. So email us at concilium at ucr.edu for any sort of questions, right? Maybe you wanna know a little bit more about the timeline, what expectations are for writers, things like that. Um, I'm more than happy to, to have a conversation with anyone who is interested. So that is it for me. Um, I'm more than happy to answer any questions. All right, thank you for your presentation, Senna. We really appreciate it. Audience members, if you haven't already, please type in your questions via the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screens. And I gently remind you to, uh, to not type your questions via chat. At this time, I'd also like to bring up a panel of our fellow classmates for a roundtable with our speaker. We have Daisy Gonzalez, myself, Joanna Arias, Camilla Pollard, and Natty Bunting. Joining Senna will be Vivek Kakar, the founding executive director of the Roosevelt Network chapter at UCR. For the remainder of the event, I'll be posing questions from our panel as well as from the audience. So I encourage our audience members, again, type in your questions via the Q&A box instead of the chat. Our first question will be from Daisy Gonzalez. Thank you, Joanna. And I think Kevin is back. Um, I think he froze for a bit, but glad to have you back, Kevin. Um, so I just wanted to ask, um, well, Sana, first, congratulations for all your hard work and all your efforts for putting this together. I'm sure it wasn't, you know, it wasn't too easy, right? I'm sure it took a lot of like behind the scenes work, you know, on top of being a student and all the other extra things that you are a part of, just, you know, congratulations. Um, and I'm excited to see where this launches um, in the fall. Um, I kind of just wanted to get, you know, um, I wanted to ask what your personal experience has been in creating this, right, and establishing this, you know, what sort of inspired you to take this lead and take the initiative to, you know, establish this at UCR? Was it, you know, your, um, you know, any experience um, in research or in, you know, as a public policy student in general, what sort of inspired you to, you know, establish this um, at, at UC Riverside specifically for the SPP? Um, so this is a, a great story and I think Vivek can definitely chime in here. Um, when we first heard about the Roosevelt Network, we were taking Public Policy 101 together. Um, and that is a lot about case studies, research methods, things like that. And I think even before then, every single class I've taken has emphasized just the importance of research. Um, getting to know who your population is, why you're doing things, and whether or not it's going to be effective. Right, because I can come up here and say, okay, I wanna do X, Y, Z. But I also need a rationale. I need to know if it's what the people want and I need to know if it's going to be effective, right? Like let's use our resources to our best advantage. Let's make sure that we are actually representing what it is that is going on in the world around us. I think we've seen so much conversation about underrepresented voices, right? Bringing people to the table, actually making sure that we are inclusive. That starts all the way at the research level. Um, and I think that's, that's sort of really important. So sorry about that, everyone. Um, I actually had a question to ask as well. Um, so Sana, I was wondering, will students be able to focus on any policy area they want or they're interested in, um, in regards to what kinds of, what kind of research they want, or is there going to be like a set group of, uh, research you want them to do? Like, what's that process going to look like? Yeah, so uh, that's a really good question. As the Dean would say, public policy is in everything around us, right? It's in everything we do. So we're definitely not limiting um, subject matter. You will have an opportunity to work within pods. Um, so those pods would be not too dissimilar from tracks, the way they're run at 
um, the School of Public Policy, but different policy groupings. You'll be able to interact with a lot more of your peers who are working on similar research areas and moving from there. Sounds really good. And uh, we actually have a question from our audience. So Brendan asks, how can I get involved with the Roseville Network to publish through Concilium? That's a great question. Um, the first step is just joining, right? We are hosting um, a couple more meetings before the school year wraps up, uh, but we'll also be back full steam in the fall with some info sessions, some workshops. All you have to do is show up. Well, we want everyone, um, Concilium is open to, to, uh, to all students. We want to allow Roosevelt Network to be kind of a, a pathway um, to get some guidance on what the steps should look like as you, um, as you look to publish. And so the Roosevelt Network um, will be conducting programming that kind of guides our members um, along the path to, to publishing in, in Concilium. So, um, so while you, while you join Roosevelt, um, and join and, and participate in our programming, you'll be getting steps closer to publishing in Concilium, um, when it is time in the fall. Again, sounds really good. So, uh, our next question is actually from one of our panelists, Joanna. Awesome. Thank you so much. So Sana, your presentation was amazing. I certainly agree that you know, and able to drive policy, we're going to require some research. As far as Concilium is concerned, when can we expect a publication or what does that timeline look like? Will it be sometime soon in the future? Yeah, so we are looking at just about a year from now, um, even a little bit less. So most of the fall will be dedicated to those early stages of research and writing. Winter will be heavily focused on editing and we're looking at popping out a full-fledged journal by early spring. Oh, that's awesome. Coming up soon here. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, and I'm sure we're all really excited for it. Uh, so our next question is from Maddie. Yes, well, Sana, I remember from last summer, um, your work with helping students with, with lease issues. And I know you are totally equipped to take this on and just so proud of you and so happy for you. I'm curious as editor in chief, if we might see any of your work, maybe even Vivek's work. Um, I'm sure you know you have some policy interests and I'm just curious um, if we can read about some of your research here soon. Maybe, maybe. Um, I'm not gonna give away too much, right? Vivek and I haven't uh, discussed exactly what the full steps are going to be from our end, but I am actually working on some research through the UCCS program and that's uh, in progress. I'm really excited about that. Do you have anything to add to that? You know, I could start and talk about digitalizing government and, and all the research that needs to be done there. Um, but I am excited to, to work with Sana on, on, if you know that is the case, on making my piece or my idea into, um, into a piece. So hopefully, fingers crossed, if I can make it through um, the editorial process, um, I'll, I'll have my piece in Concilium, but just, just another opportunity um, to, to highlight some, some important policy issues um, that are gonna affect our society um, in, the upcoming, in the upcoming years. Yeah, if you were to ask Definitely. Vivek or I about any of our research interests or policy interests, we could probably talk for hours on end. Um, so that's another time. <laughs> I think we should definitely do that at some point. So we have another audience question from Brendan. Uh, are there any time commitments associated with getting involved? So our goal is to make this as flexible as possible, which means hosting quite a few different workshops uh, as the quarter goes along. There will be a hard deadline at the end, um, but it's going to be largely working on your own, making sure you're scheduling time with our editing team, working with your peers and so on. There will be a lot of flexibility here, at most a couple hours a week if you're spacing it out. So our next question is going to be from another panelist, uh, Ken. Hi, Sana. It was such a great presentation. 
Uh, just listening to you and just talking about the concilium is really inspiring and congratulations. Um, I know you mentioned that a lot of students will have the opportunity to publish on the local and national level. Um, what is the process for a lot of the students? Will they go just directly for the local or is there a way they can just go directly as a national publication? So uh, we expect actually most of the students to start out locally just because this is an opportunity for them to use our editing team to actually speak with their peers. Um, to go straight to the national is obviously doable through the Roosevelt Network. It's just, you know, we want our students to have just the fullest access to a peer review team and editing team um, going through just all of the steps for publication. Speaking to, to national publications, um, you do have to be a member of the Roosevelt Network to apply to the National Roosevelt 10 Ideas Journal as it's hosted um, through our parent um, organization uh, through, the, through the Roosevelt Institute. And so um, once you work with the editorial team here locally with Concilium, the idea is, is that your piece will be refined to the point where it's ready to be published at the national level. And, what I'm really hoping to do um, as executive director of the Roosevelt Network is to um, have a lot of these pieces come out of our membership and as a result, be able to put forward a lot of these pieces um, so that we have a better chance of getting these great ideas that are coming out of um, the uh, UCR student body, um, both within and outside of the School of Public Policy um, featured in that, in that opportunity. And so that's, that's kind of how the national um, aspect of it works. Yeah, that sounds really good. And again, everything you guys are saying just makes me more excited about the potential of what kind of research students can do. Um, and I actually have a question on research, uh, kind of alluding to what you were talking about early in your presentation, Sana. You know, do you have like any idea of how intensive the research is going to be? Um, you know, is there a specific uh, you know, kind that you expect, or is it again going to be kind of open ended um, and you're going to let the students kind of choose how they want to do it? Yeah, so this is going to be a relatively uh, short piece. We will have formatting requirements and a, and a page limit, things like that. Uh, the actual research itself will be not too intensive. We'll be mostly able to guide you through the process, uh, through our initial workshops and the work on your own will not be overwhelming, I promise. Uh, that's also good to hear, because um, I think sometimes people can be a little intimidated uh, by research, you know, it's such a, uh, a broad area, you know, some people might be afraid to join, but I think, you know, you're able to reassure them that it's not going to be that bad. And, you know, they can still do research on topics that they're interested in. So uh, next, uh, Daisy has another question to ask. Yeah, thank you, Kevin. And um, likewise, you know, it sounds really exciting. I'm a little bit jealous because I will be graduating. And the more you all talk about it, it's like, wow, I, I wish this was a bit sooner because, um, you know, I myself am trying to get into research. But I, I'm curious to hear about the workshops. Um, will these be focused on, right, um, the different types of research? Will it be focused on you know, how to come up with the research question. What are the uh, the workshops going to consist of? I'm, I'm not sure if you can give us a sneak peek. I know it's still a little early, but um, I was just kind of curious to hear. Yeah, absolutely. I can definitely do a, a sneak peek here. So one of, we'll have a, a couple of different types of workshops, but we will definitely have a research question oriented workshop um, that will be pod oriented. So Maybe your pod is econ focused. We will have an econ specific sort of topic lecture, how to form your research question type of um, workshop happening on a pod by pod basis. In addition to that, we'll also be taking a look at specific formatting workshops, like general research workshops. There are a couple of things in the works there. Again, I feel like I'm repeating myself, but it just all sounds so good that, you know, there's nothing else to say there. Um, so we have another question from a panelist, uh, Joanna. Thank you. Yeah, as an incoming student, especially to public policy, um, Concilium and the Roosevelt ne Network seems incredibly interesting. In fact, I'll be attending on Thursday for the next, um, next general meeting. I have another question. As far as for 
um, going through the editing process and submitting your publication, is it more individualized based on one student's research and writing or can it be a group? Can you co-author? How does that look like? Yeah, so there will actually be an opportunity for you to work with one or two other students. Beyond that, we don't recommend working in large groups um, just because of the work distribution, um, you know, where you wanna take the direction of the research, things like that. Uh, but you can definitely work with one or two of your uh, peers in the Roosevelt Network. And then when it comes down to the editing team, we have uh, me, editor in chief, and we also have two junior editors that were um, actually just onboarded. So um, you'll have an opportunity to work with them, set deadlines with them, um, as long as you do it by sort of that hard deadline at the end. So we actually have another audience question from Brendan. Um, he asks if there are other if there are others that share our interests, can we co-author research for the journal? Yeah, so that's really similar actually to Joanna's question and you can absolutely co-author um, if that is what you would like. So we have another question from a panelist. Uh, Cam, go ahead. Thanks, Kevin. Sana, I know you had mentioned that Concilium will great, be a great opportunity for students to do research and, you know, it's very daunting asking for professors, you know, if they're doing research and everything. I know also Concilium is really student led and student ran, but would there be any potential opportunities for students to engage or even SPP faculty um, in these types of research? Yeah, absolutely. So whatever is going to be published in the journal will be entirely student led, but we will actually be speaking to faculty about the potential of just mentoring students, maybe sitting down and having a conversation once you begin writing, things like that. And I actually have a question uh, similar to what Cam asks. You might have kind of answered this, but maybe you can elaborate. Um, you know, in terms of professors and you know the classes we take and uh, you know what we learn from that, you know, in your opinion, do you think that you know concealing can maybe add on to what we learn in class? You know, is there a way we can kind of translate what we learn into the research that someone can do in concilium? Or do you think that there's you know it's a little bit more separate? You know, what are your thoughts on that? Oh, I absolutely think you can build on this. Uh, so I was saying actually the the first question when we started looking at this, um, Vivek and I put out a little survey for everyone. We use that to sort of compile our results, actually do that little bit of analysis and figure out what it is we wanna put into this journal um, and what sorts of resources we wanna to allocate towards this journal. Um, and that class, like, you know, we got tons of help from Professor Brady, like working on the survey, um, figuring out what it is we wanna do there um, and, you know, I think one of the biggest first steps in research and writing is just getting familiar with academic writing, right? And most of your classes will have those reading requirements. You're getting sort of this first look at what policy research looks like. And I mean, I think at that point you're already halfway there. And at the School of Public Policy, we also do have a diverse group, um, a, di a diverse collection of faculty members who are engaging in exciting research. I mean, just I just have spoken with um, Professor Esterling on his um, research about um, and about, about like town halls and, and digital town halls that he, uh, he's working on a platform right now, and so there are a, a number of of issues that are covered by um, that are covered by our research by our faculty, and so um, one of the first steps in kind of just figuring out what you want to research at, at the individual level will be to reach out to these these faculty members and we're so we're so glad to have faculty members here on campus um, that are willing to, to to listen that have open door policies um, and that um, make time for students and and their questions because they're excited about the research um, as students we have kind of questions and are excited as well and so that that just matches up to continue um, the research going forward. And so, um, you know, if there isn't like a, like a concilium sponsored event, which we are in the, we're, you know, we are working to do that. Um, there's always the opportunity to reach out to our, our faculty who is more than, who are, who are more than happy to help. 
Yeah, and I think that's a really good point, Vivek, the fact that, you know, the faculty and the student body is so invested in actually um, getting research done and concilium. It just seems like a really good tool to do that. And Sana, I actually had a quick follow-up to something you mentioned on academic writing. Um, this might be a little bit obvious, but I just want to see if you can elaborate a little bit. Do you think concilium will also, you know, play a role in helping students maybe uh, advance their writing skills and their ability to actually be able to write um, you know, publishable level um, pieces? Absolutely. Even if you don't want to, you know, commit to that very last submission, uh, submission step, you can still certainly attend our workshops and we are more than happy to help. I think overall, just working your way through our publication process, that's, it's going to be uh, it's going to be a lot in terms of improving your own research and writing skills, just going from these initial workshops to actually working with your peers to working with different editors and getting exposed to, okay, maybe this sounds better or, you know, learning what works best. So we actually have another audience question. Um, can students enroll in research credits credits for the public policy major while conducting research for a concilium? No, not at the moment. Um, this is definitely something to look into, but at the moment, this is just going to be um, workshopping, working through that research on your own. Well, with our help. Definitely. And uh, we have another question from Daisy. Um, thank you, Kevin. Um, yeah, you know, hopefully, you know, this will provide students, right, that stepping stool, that introduction to research, which sometimes can be a little bit hard to get into. But um, I wanted to ask, you know, besides, you know, working on, on writing, you know, research, right, um, students submitting research, will there be any future opportunities for students to get more involved? Um, you know, maybe, you know, joining a committee of some sorts or sitting in on those um, editorial board meetings, right, to really see the behind the scenes kind of work of how editing works in the research world, right? Um, will there be any future opportunities for students to get more involved in those sort of roles um, in Concilium? Yeah, definitely. I think that's actually a, a really good point. So you will be able to work closely with the editing team. Um, and based off of your personal preferences, you can sit down with your editors and have them, you know, walk you through exactly what the process was. You can ask them, hey, just send me an emailed copy of whatever your edits are. You can be as involved or as distant as you want here. So our next question is going to be from Joanna. With Concilium being new and uh, introduced today, um, how large do you imagine Concilium to grow to? Do you have any plans for the future? How many members are going to be in it? Yeah, so I think um, Vivek can definitely speak more to this, but our goal right now is just to create something sustainable. Um, we see so often clubs and organizations, publications, they start out with this big boom and then all of a sudden interest uh, just goes down. Uh, we're looking to build something to last because this is just that kind of opportunity for students. Um, you know, at the moment we're working on our first publication but there are definitely going to be opportunities in the near future if you wanna apply for an editor position or if you wanna get more involved on the marketing side, you can definitely also get more involved through Roosevelt. Like Vivek said, it's going to be used as a pipeline, right? You join Roosevelt, you enter into these awesome policy discussions and realize, okay, let's get into the research here. Um, so there's, there's tons to do on that front. And within Roosevelt, um, so if, if, um, if publication isn't your goal, but you still want to take part in the research and you still want to take part in the discussion of policy, um, you will want to get involved because we have a bunch of opportunities to not only talk about policy and, 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 and the research being done about policy, but also connecting with schools around us. So we recently just held an event um, with the Roosevelt chapter at UCLA. Um, in a larger kind of UC coalition that we're, we're trying to establish, um, where we talked about grad school application process um, and, 
and what is like kind of next steps from from here and so we're looking at Roosevelt to be a broad kind of scope there's definitely room for growth we are open um, to everyone on campus, um, not just the School of Public Policy, and want to include everyone to get that um, that wide kind of diverse the the, the, diver the diversity of ideas. We you know we want people studying healthcare to dictate healthcare policy, and we want people studying environmental studies to dictate how our how we deal with our climate ch uh, change issues, and so giving them the tools of policy um, extends far greater beyond publication. And that's what Roosevelt hopes to offer. But here kind of highlighting what the power of publication as, as Sana has so eloquently done, um, this is just another opportunity that we're able to um, offer uh, to the student body. Yeah, and I think it's really great that, you know, you all are just, you know, providing these resources and ability, you know, giving people the tools that the other might the otherwise might not think they have in terms of doing the kind of research they want you know some people might feel boxed in in terms of not having those resources so i just think it's really amazing that y'all have done all this work for it uh so we have actually we actually have a few audience questions um so this is from an anonymous attendee uh what will roosevelt slash concilium events look like moving into fall quarter So um, we're going to probably start out with some info sessions, um, especially just easing into the new academic year. We'll also be having tons and tons of events through Roosevelt, more of the concilium workshops. Um, keep an eye out. You'll hear about them soon. The best way to follow our traction is to visit our website, um, roosevelt.ucr.edu, um, and, and to follow us on social media. But we do have a lot planned. Um, in terms of programming for uh, the for the for the upcoming quarter, that sounds really good. So our next question is going to be from um, Cam. It's funny you all mention events now because that's kind of along the lines of what I wanted to ask you all, Vivek. I know you had mentioned before about potential co-sponsoring, um, so that got me thinking. Is do you all have any plans, maybe not necessarily fall quarter because you all are starting up, but for Concilium Roosevelt Network, you're co-sponsoring outside of the UCR community, aside from publishing. So I think that's a really interesting question and it's definitely something I think Vivek and I have had probably hours worth of conversation on um, you know, whether or not we can just expand this far, far beyond UCR. Um, and the truth of the matter it is that it does come down to sustainability. Are we going too far before we even get our own feet onto the ground? Um, so it's something to look at down the line, but right now we're focused on, uh, on home at UCR. Roosevelt does want to, to build those coalitions with uh, the Roosevelt chapters at Berkeley and UCLA. Um, just being that we have the shared experience of being a UC. Um, and so we want to be able to host kind of like policy talks where you can bounce your ideas off of people who are removed from your circumstances. Um, and that one grows your network and two allows you to kind of get another perspective on your idea. So in terms of like policy creation and, 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 and research, um, you, we're looking to create those opportunities and, and to host those events. Um, but as it comes to kind of like publishing within our journal, Sana is, um, Sana is right where we should, we're looking to create something sustainable. Um, and so we're going to, we're going to get comfy here at UCR first, and then let's see what happens. You know, public policy students tend to be very ambitious. I mean, look at all of us here. And so, um, who knows what, what lies ahead for Concilium and Roosevelt. I definitely agree with that. I think a lot of us are really with a lot of goals, but I don't think that's a bad thing at all. I think that's you know, what makes our school here uh, really special. So we actually have another audience question. Um, what backgrounds do you need to have to join Roosevelt and what are the requirements to join? So this is the best part, nothing. No background, no requirement, nothing. Um, and the reason that is, is because I think a lot of what we've been talking about today has been research is intimidating, things like this. It's, it's a lot to handle. Right. Say you're a first year and you're like, OK, I want to do research, but I have no idea where to start. 
right? That's really tough. And you maybe don't know what to do. You want to get involved, but you just don't know how. This is a fantastic place to start just because we are here to guide you through the process. We are here to introduce you to this world of research um, and you can commit to it in any way you want. Like Senna said, um, we are um, we're open to everyone here at UCR. It's not just um, the School of Public Policy, even though we're hosted within the School of Public Policy, because we want to be able to offer tools. The, 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 the main idea here at, at Roosevelt is that we can empower uh, the youth voice with the proper tools. And so as public policy students, we know, we, we know what that is, but we want to be able to to spread that knowledge and spread that wealth because it's not just for us to have, it's for it's for change to be made at every level, everywhere we go um, with the education that we get um, here at, at the college level. And so it's really important to us to be open to everyone um, and, to, and to offer up these tools and resources um, to anyone who's interested. And we have another audience question. Vivek, you kind of alluded to this, but I'm gonna ask it anyway. Uh, can I get involved even if I'm not a public policy student? I'll just hit it off the bat since I think I, I saw it when it came in. You don't have to be a public policy student to join us um, at Roosevelt. And I'll let kind of Senna talk about how Consilium works in terms of that. Yeah, absolutely. So I think Vivek, you started talking about this a little bit earlier, but we want diverse backgrounds, right? And that means within majors too, just because everyone does have a different viewpoint, everyone does have a different background, different area of expertise. So you don't just have to be a public policy major to talk about um, technology policy or talking about, hey, how do we increase our resilience to wildfires, things like that. Um, your diverse backgrounds, your majors, whatever, it's all an asset here. Um, it really, really will help you moving forward uh, with Concilium, with all of this, because we want diverse perspectives. They're really important. And I think that that's a really good point. Um, it really makes it special because you have so many different kinds of people coming together, um, trying to publish or research on a certain policy that they, they want. And, you know, it's also really good for the audience. So kind of a question that we might have spoken about a little bit earlier, but I was just hoping if you could elaborate um, in your like kind of visionary opinion, uh, if that's one way I can put it, you know, what's your, how do you see Concilium five or maybe even 10 years down the road, you know, what's the ideal version of that in the future? Our ideal version would be an expanded editorial team, an expanded Roosevelt network, an expanded student base, um, you know, where students are really comfortable doing the work, doing the research, unafraid to get involved. Um, and I think, you know, the ultimate goal is to have real policy discussion, real ideas come forward. Um, and I mean, I, I think we can make that happen now, but at an even larger level down the line. I think a big part of this also is going to have to do with how our policy solutions make a difference. Um, and so after, you know, after we publish, after the ideas are published and, and we have worked them through, um, we want to be able to advocate for them. And so um, a big part of, of thinking about things and, and thinking about how about new ways to solve problems is to then implement them and to advocate for the implementing of them in that fashion. So um, be it not through Concilium, then even through uh, Roosevelt, we, we want to start that um, advocacy part of it too. So this all is happening as an opportunity for us, but then we want to take it to the next step and actually make sure that we are making change. That's kind of the idealistic end goal of this all is to make sure to make change in our community both at the, the local level and then hopefully at the national level and, and overreaching and just reaching out because the policies that or the issues that happen here um, don't necessarily just stop here. They're, they're mimicked all across the world. I also want to put out there that it's entirely doable to have an impact, right? Even at the undergraduate level with research. Um, we haven't seen it happen with Concilium quite yet because we're too new but we have seen it happen through other schools um, on financialization, larger research studies commission there. There was an undergraduate research project recently done um, that led to a larger project through the California Department of Education. So 
even even your little piece published through Concilium has tons and tons of impact. And like Vivek said, we're here to give you the tools to bring it further. And I actually have a quick follow up. Um, Vivek, you kind of mentioned this a little bit, but you know, obviously, you know, our student body has a lot of you know creative ideas in terms of how we can address different issues that we all face from you know the local level all the way up to the to the national level. But do you also think the opposite might happen where, you know, some individuals who may, maybe might not have very unique ideas maybe can join Concilium and, you know, through that effort can maybe develop ide new ideas? You know, is that something that, you know, you've uh, maybe considered happening where, you know, different people coming together might actually spawn new ideas that they otherwise wouldn't have thought of before? Well, and that's the goal of, of the, the, so, in Roosevelt, and I know that Sana has kind of uh, talked about it and, and uh, referenced it, but the pod structure, for example, um, we have, we've grouped a bunch of different ideas. So one of our pods is um, education, healthcare, childcare, and so, like just cultural issues. And that's a very broad pod. Um, but what we imagine is that within that pod, there will be discussions about current events or, or issues that we're facing now. And the different perspectives will guide how people think about things and, and we'll get them starting, we'll get them to start thinking about new ways to approach the idea. So childcare, for example, um, there, it's, it's, it, some people see it as an infrastructure for our workforce. Other people see it as just not their responsibility. And so working those ideas and hearing different perspectives, I think it's one of the stages of policy creation and it's what makes um, the field of public policy is so broad is because we're able to bring all of these ideas together and find solutions that work for everyone. And so ideas shift, ideas change, and ideas evolve. And I think that that is what, and actually I'm going to tie it together here, that's what Concilium is all about. Just the word in, in Latin, that's what that's all about, is molding ideas through discussion and, and sharing your stories um, and creating something in the end that is is applicable to everyone and that helps everyone. Um, Sana, I, I, I see you wanting to add more. I was just thinking, um, Concilium is also pretty representative of the way the journal was formed, right? We had a back and forth about what it is we need to provide for students, what's more important here, what do we need to prioritize, what do students wanna see, what does the data tell us? Um, so I think, yeah, you're absolutely right. We need to have that discussion to move ideas forward. Yeah, that sounds really good. And I think that's, you know, going to be part of the way um, students will not only be wanting to join Concilium, but also, you know, how the future um, world of policymaking uh, might look like. So um, our next question is from Daisy. Thank you, Kevin. Um, so I know just recently the Roosevelt Network had a panel of alumni. Um, that was really great to hear, you know, um, having students come together. Um, and I'm curious, you know, is Concilium going to be focused specifically on the undergraduate level or do you all see expanding, you know, for SPP alumni who also want to engage in research or, um, you know, want to publish some sort of research? Um, will it be expanded to um, SPP alumni as well? So we currently see this as an undergraduate project just because setting up, we wanna make sure we are being realistic in terms of our reach, in terms of what we can do in our very first few months. Um, down the line, there's tons and tons of potential to be getting submissions from everywhere, right? Not just the undergraduate population, but our alumni outside of UCR, tons of stuff like that. Um, but for now, we're starting out with our undergrads. So going to go to Joanna now for the next question. And then Senna, you touched on this a bit earlier, um, but if I could have you expand for me, could you give me an example or a sort of um, a success of the power of policy research and publication? Is there another example from another journal that um, has maybe given you some inspiration? I think all over the place. Um, I'm, I'm a big old nerd, like you guys can hear me say that all the time. So I regularly just go through academic papers. Um, and I, I mean, I'm fascinated by research. And I think, especially now, there's been a lot, a lot, a lot of research about 
childcare, women leaving the workforce, things like that. Um, because I, I think the labor econ question becomes a little bit complicated about why women are leaving the workforce, things like that. Um, but things like that, you know, new research, moving things forward about what the solution is, right? Traditionally, childcare wasn't necessarily seen as an infrastructure problem. Um, but more recently, you know, the research has become a lot stronger. The research is a lot more prevalent about, you know, why this could be a problem and potential ways we can resolve that. So as we approach uh, our time limit, uh, Cam is going to have the last question for the event today. Thank you, Kevin. Um, you know, as you were all talking and Concilium being like the research function for all students to just question and like bring policy ideas to the forefront of the school and even locally and nationally, do you, either of you have any steps or ideas on how students can learn to later on implement these resources or these research proposals that they have or maybe soon to be published? Yeah, I think, um, I mean, if it's, if it's one thing we know as public policy students is that policy does take time um, because there are so, so many steps to go through. Um, you know, getting that initial research done is one step, but you also have tons and tons of things to do down the line. Um, and that includes advocacy, that includes reaching out, leveraging your network, doing tons of stuff like that. Um, but I think Vivek can speak more to how, I guess the Roosevelt Network will really help students work on that. So we are at the Roosevelt Network, we're currently planning on ad advocacy efforts once the, you know, the journal is published and, and ideas are, are, are thought out and follow the pr procedure that we have in place of um, the steps it takes to go from thinking about something to have it written to having it written down. Um, but I do want to say that we it, it's we we've seen a lot of um, this in the summer, and and I think or this past summer where policy ideas were floated um, and with the intention of changing the way that um, significant communities um, within or like sub communities within our community experience our society. And then they went to bat for it. They went, they spoke to their representatives, they reached out to their senators, they reached out to their local gov uh, local representatives and, and local elected officials. And I think that as you think about the idea and as you think about the scope of what is feasible to implement, um, we want to follow up on advocacy um, efforts on in, uh, in those scenarios and in those spaces. And I think that, um, as public policy students, we are also outspoken and know when, know when, who, who and when to talk to you about things. And so um, it, it, it'll be interesting to see what comes out of it, um, given the resources that Senna's team is able to give um, people looking to publish and looking to kind of refine their ideas. But it's, it's, another, it's another process, it's another step in the process. And, and uh, I'm excited to see what our student body does with the ideas that they, that they uh, manufacture. I think that's a great point, Vivek. Uh, I definitely think the public policy students are outspoken uh, and for good reason. So unfortunately, uh, that is all the time we have for questions. So I just wanna say thank you once again to Sana Joffrey for joining us to talk about Concilium. Uh, and thank you to our audience members for attending this Student Spotlight uh, event hosted by the UCR School of Public Policy. So our next online event will be this Thursday, March 13th at 12 noon Pacific time. And it's the next installment of our Water Seminar series titled Missing More Than a Classroom, The Impact of COVID-19 School Closures on the Nutrition of School-Aged Children. You can learn more about events like these hosted by the UCR School of Public Policy by visiting spp.ucr.edu. You can also learn more about our new forthcoming BA slash MPP program launching fall 2022 on our website.